Throughout its history, Notre Dame athletics has inspired men and women onward to victory in the game of life, often despite tremendous odds against them. These journeys have manifested themselves in a variety of physical, mental, and spiritual forms, but one element binds them together. Persistence fueled by the spirit of Notre Dame. We will fight in every game, strong of heart and true to her name. To be successful, you have to be driven by faith. You have to have faith in yourself. You have to have faith in what you're doing. You have to have faith in your teammates. You have to have faith in your coaching staff. So uh, to me, faith is what makes you great. And uh, Monty has the upper hand on that. Born in Fredericksburg, Virginia, Monty Williams grew up playing a multitude of sports. While in high school, he began to stand out as a basketball player, earning him a spot on the Notre Dame team. Right out the gate, I was one of those guys that everything was natural for me. And, you know, I felt like I wasn't going to be there long. Athletically, he, he was very gifted. Um, you could tell, you know, how he ran on the court. He was fluid. He had a nice shot. I was a freshman, but Coach Phelps started me, and I was playing big in big games. And, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to be a, a man. That's what I thought manhood was about. I met this girl like the first week of school. I didn't quite realize that he was a basketball player. I remember asking him, um, so uh, you play basketball? And he said, yeah. And I said, do you know how to dunk? And he said, oh, no. And I was thinking, oh, well, OK, you know. <laughs> and I went to one of their first games, and he dunked. And I was thinking, oh, my gosh, this guy can play basketball. It was kind of surprising to see his gift and his talent and how good he actually was, because he played it down. He was very humble. She was different. You know, most of the girls that I had met were in love with this idea of what Monty was going to be. And she would talk to me about family and our faith. Um, and we would sit and talk for hours and wouldn't realize it. And I kind of knew that this girl was a bit different. Monty would finish his freshman year scoring 222 points, helping the Irish achieve a 16 and 13 record. We do a, a routine physical uh, before every season, and uh, one of our doctors heard something, and his the heart just didn't sound the way it should. It sounded a little bit louder. You heard you know people all the time play with heart murmurs, and, and uh, it sounded similar to that. When the final diagnosis came out, we were we were all shocked. They're explaining it to me, and I still don't get it because hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is not a word you use every day. At that point in time, there was not that much known about this disease. Most people who have it aren't aware of it until they drop dead. Looking back on it, it's just a dark day, you know. One minute I'm talking to my high school coach about going hardship, and having a good year, I'm 6'8", 230, and the next day they tell me that I have a heart condition. And when you're 18 years old, you don't know how to process all that. He came to my room and he said, you know, I've got some news, I can't play basketball anymore. She started crying, and in her next breath, she said that the Lord can heal your heart, Monty, um, if you believe. And at the time, I, I was just numb. Uh, we both grew up in the church, and faith was important. But you know, once I got to school, basketball became my God. He was devastated. Not being able to play, that was why he came to school. And for the first time in a long time, I was just a student. And that was tough for me, because I you know, most people don't want to admit it, but I, I took advantage of those perks. You know, I was, you know, the big man on campus from a basketball standpoint, and that was gone. They told me to stop playing for about two months to see if my heart would change, and it didn't. And so, me being thick-headed and stubborn, I just said, well, I'm gonna do what I want. 
and I just started playing ball at the Rock like right away. That was my haven. You know, I would go there and just play for hours. And whoever got in my way, they were gonna get dominated. That was just, that was my mentality. And the only person that could really calm me down or get me to think another way was Ingrid. We would walk around the lake and go to the grotto and pray. And you know, when you go through trials, when you go through times when the things that are most dear to you have been taken away, what you can only turn to is the Lord. And that's what we did. You know, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And that was tough for me because I had trusted in so many other things. You know, basketball had become my idol. And this situation put basketball in perspective. And being at Notre Dame, taking a theology class, um, being around fathers and priests at the school who, would, who were around me when I played, and you know, I'd run into those guys on campus, and you know, I knew those people were praying for me, um, even when I didn't deserve it. And so I don't know if that would have happened at another school. They called me in, um, and they, this athletic department, uh, Skip, our trainer, he said, look, we want you to go to have this testing done. And I'm laying on a table and I got to lay flat for 12 hours or this vein pops out of your hip and you'll bleed. And uh, Dr. Fanana Pazir, he walks in and he just, he says, I have great news for you. Um, you can play ball again. And um, the first thing in my mind was, thank you, Lord. You know, without a doubt, I just knew that the Lord had allowed me to play again. The day he was told that he could play again um, was extremely emotional for, for everyone. And, uh, you know, we knew we were making the right decision at the time with the information that we had. And uh, to see someone who didn't think he would ever play again come back and, and, and be able to the integral part of the team, you know, it was extremely rewarding. I knew that I'd gotten a second chance to not only play, but to try to take advantage of the opportunity to be a better steward with my talent, my time. Um, no longer did I want to die on a basketball court, whereas before I, I'd do it in a minute. The first time I had heard of Monty Williams, I was playing in the NBA, and I, you know, read and hear about this kid with the heart problems. What he did with his heart situation, to me, goes down as one of the things that I'll, I'll never forget from all my time in the NBA. He had, he played with a constant chip on his shoulder. He had an edge to him, and yet he was one of the kindest men I'd ever met. And it's very difficult to master those two things on and off the court. You know, I'm with the Knicks, and here comes Monty Williams in the door. He gets drafted by the Knicks. He said I was his mentor. I didn't know I was doing that at the time. You know, I was just telling him the ways of the league. And then I end up coaching Monty in uh, Orlando. We were talking. I don't know what we were talking about. He just said, Monty, you're going to be a head coach someday. And I told him he was nuts, like right away. And he would say, no, I'm not. I look at you. You're crazy. <laughs> and I said, you'll be too. Uh, but it's a crazy love coaching and he has the integrity and the character and he's somebody you want to follow and I think uh, that makes a heck of a coach when you have a guy that you want to follow and you don't want to let down and now it's come full circle he's coaching my son. Monty has so much faith and belief in himself and in and, and, and God and and it just it rubs off him and it, it's it's just nice to have somebody like that in your corner uh, you know, there's, there's not too many players in, in professional sports who can say that they have a coach that is, that is as positive as Coach Williams. And when you have someone like that in your corner, it really makes your confidence go up to a whole different level. It makes you even want to work harder for him and the team. He's sincere, he's reliable, and he's trustworthy. He's honest, uh, he cares. All those things go into getting a group to follow you. My love for the game is something that I, I have it again. You know, I, I want to see the game get better. Coaching gives you a great opportunity to, to do that. I thought all I was going to get from Notre Dame was a great education and an opportunity to further 
my career as an athlete, but I found out that when I came to Notre Dame, there was something wrong with my heart. And physically, when I left, my heart was in better shape, but emotionally, when I left, I was in better shape because that's where I started to become a man. And um, that place can't be replaced in my heart.